It has been a long time coming, but it's finally time. You know how everyone has that one show they've been putting off for no reason? Like a new series can come out, anime, TV show, whatever, and you delay it for absolutely no reason. Well that was me for Baki, a little underground show that you may have heard of, and after running away from it for far too long, I've finally given it a watch. Netflix dropped an adaptation of Baki a little while back, and I got the chance to watch it for the first time a couple days ago. The reason why I watched it you may ask? Well, Baki is one of them shows that you don't really find, it finds you, cause on my time Timeline and through a couple friends showing me, I was seeing the most out of pocket clips from this show, this season in particular that I just had to know the context to. Like why the hell was Yujiro pulling up to Baki doing the deed? What the hell does this screen cap even mean? There was too many questions popping up relating to this new season that I just had to pick it up and here we are. I've already seen Baki the Grappler a while back but this Netflix adaptation was completely new to me and after watching 26 ish episodes of it, oh man there is almost too much to to get into. Here's your quick spoiler warning if you haven't seen this part of Bucky yet and for those who have, this season just like Bucky the Grappler was out of this world crazy and I had too much fun watching this. Bucky is like the combination of Hajime no Ippo's ridiculously strong characters along with the Jojo's unpredictability slash randomness in the fights. It's like if you combined both of them series and times everything by a thousand and that was the conclusion I came to after watching Bucky the Grappler. This later season is more of the same with even more craziness going on cause from Jump, the plot was insane and had me hooked from episode 1. Post maximum tournament, 5 death row convicts that are broken beyond imagination escape their prisons and head to Japan with all the power in the world seeking one thing and one thing only, defeat. Japan is where it's at to find the strong individuals around and these inmates wanted a taste of what Japan got cooking so they all simultaneously had a synchronized feeling because that's just how the Bakivas works. They head on over there and from their escape alone you could tell these guys were really ridiculous. I mean every damn person in Baki is powerful but these lot were, to put it very simply, built different. Real real dangerous foes right here that all had Baki in their sights as the guy to fight and the way these lot escaped was mad. One guy survived being hanged, took out everyone with his toes and swam to Japan, another one broke out of a 200 meter underground submarine that was looking like impelled down and another dude broke out of a Russian prison which goes without saying is the craziest feat of the bunch. This first episode really wanted to make it clear that these lot ain't your regular opponents, they are something else entirely but to be honest it didn't convey that point well enough cause some of the feats these lot were pulling off, the violations in the first part of the season especially had me kinda worried for the boy Baki. One of them just after touching down in Japan pulled up to Baki, gave him a little warning then proceeded to get himself arrested just so he could have a base to operate out of. The detective trying to arrest these convicts thought they had one in the bag, next thing you know bro is taking a piss right next to him and casually going to the store and back with nothing they can do about it. So far in the season everything seemed kinda wild but then again I wasn't shocked like that. I'm familiar with Bucky's game when it comes to showcasing these ridiculous characters so some of the stuff they've shown so far was expected and wasn't anything too too outlandish. That was until the Russian dude got busy and I can comfortably say that what he did was one of the worst violations I've seen in a minute. This season ain't like the last one where it's just one big tournament arc, the death row convicts don't really give a fuck about no organizing fighting setup, it's straight on site action and fighting in the most despicable way they can and this Russian dude right here gets himself kidnapped, puts on this Walter White you got me act all to perform the most devious beatdown in the entirety of the season. Russian dude while on the ropes gets his little act found out, cuts up both the guys who captured him and proceeds to cook the hell out of Igari, a guy who proved previously stepped to Bucky and this fight as it went on continued to get worse and worse. The inmate picks up a barbell like it's nothing, swings it at Igari and dashes multiple dumbbells towards him. This shit looked so brutal and went on for like 30 seconds straight before the inmate takes a piss on the guy's head. The violation he did before this fight? Fine. Throwing weights at him? A bit extreme but fair enough. But pissing on his head top? Oh nah, that is beyond rude. And Igari tried to catch him lacking but gets caught out again and cut down, left there to bleed out. I feel like I just made up a random scenario in my head but this shit actually happened and was the most insane way to show how strong and dangerous these death row convicts are. Cause Bucky characters simply don't die, this guy right here actually gets his gut back and revenge on this inmate but even still, you cannot 
not show your face after that sequence of violations happened to you. And in only three episodes, the author did a great job in showcasing that these lot mean business. They are coming to cause some trouble, and they very much did, but even though they are broken beyond imagination, their opponents, their proper opponents, not this guy who got violated and needs to put the fries in the bag, can very much match their ability and even surpass it drastically with the goats of Baki, Retsu, Haneyama, Doppo, and a couple others squaring up to these guys. Haneyama especially popped off like crazy at the start of the arc. He was actually one of the characters I was excited to see more of going into this season and whilst his old friend Baki was chilling on a date, lick shit not caring that all these death row murderers are out to get him, Haneyama pulled up and swiftly took the guy hunting Baki away like how Ichigo did Aizen and put in some serious work. His opponent here spec was obviously powerful as hell like the other inmates, performing the most ridiculous stuff you can think of like, you know, almost destroying the Statue of Liberty for no reason. But this guy Haneyama simply just had more aura. He had that thing about him and his past of raiding a Yakuza base and beating everyone there barehanded because his tattoo wasn't complete is one of the most badass feats from a character I've ever seen. And if you thought I was glazing, the anime had a running commentary going on from a police officer who spent the entire episode glazing Haneyama as the fight went on. A police officer talking good about a Yakuza boss mind you, but to be honest I can't even blame him. Bro beat the death row inmate up and brought him directly to the station with half his face blown up. Even though he does damn near nothing for the rest of the season, Haneyama went crazy this arc had the most gritty brutal fight in the season so far and one of the most exciting ones overall. Same goes for Doppo, the guy who devoted his entire life to a style of karate he created that popped off against the American inmate. You remember when I said these inmates fight in the most despicable, dishonorable way they can? Well, this American guy was the epitome of that. The most slimy guy who despite being one of the strongest out of all the death row inmates, should have died so many times but managed to escape in the most stupid ways possible. After maneuvering through every situation he faced, the inmate came across a serious doppo and finally ran out of luck. Kinda like the dude from JJK when he ran into Sukuna for a second time. Doppo got to work against him and cooked. Everyone else struggled against this dude but Doppo was making him feel true fear for the first time, seeing through his buki abilities like that genjutsu illusion and dealing with him effortlessly. You know a character in anime is popping off when someone watching the fight is constantly glazing and that was the exact case here. This fight was wild but when Doppo brought his crippled student to come get his get back on the inmate that completely sent me. I was like ain't no way and Doppo messed him up so bad that he actually feared this guy as well. Such an insane character and only a few guys stand above him for me. One of them being Baki who was so unserious throughout this part. Part 1 was just Baki putting the moves on this girl and only until the very end we finally saw him get serious. And of course the person behind Baki changing moods had to be this devious motherfucker right here. Hanma Yujiro man, he saw Baki doing his thing and found an opportunity, making one of the inmates kidnap Baki's girl in order to get him serious. And this led into part 2 of the season where we finally got to see prime time Baki. Baki as a series got the ability to not include Baki basically at all in a season and still produce some fire episodes and fights due to how stacked the cast is. Everywhere you look there is a different monster of a character and more getting introduced as the story goes on that you want to see in action, but to be honest I had enough. I needed to see my goat Baki going crazy and part 2 provided. He almost went too crazy in this latter half cause he was looking like a sick spongebob towards the end. Baki popped off man and snatched his chain back as the MC of this show. This inmate right here was the one that did the violation I talked about earlier and wow. Baki really made this dude suffer and kickstarted his downfall of straight L after L after L and this all happened cause he put hands on his girl. The aura in this meetup right here with Yujiro and Oliver was through the roof. They're out here holding this Russian dude like he's nothing and Baki crashed the party not giving a single f he was on straight violence to anyone in his sight, starting with this inmate. He obviously did his thing here but it wasn't convincing. The inmate managed to escape and Baki didn't really do anything too too crazy against him. But then round 2 kicks off, with Baki in his tournament gear pulling up to him at his hideout. This inmate right here pulled off one of the worst violations in the season early on but what Baki did to him, what Baki put my man through was rude and it was freaking amazing. Beating the life out of him with no remorse, attacking literally 
every part of this dude and the worst part is he ain't even allow him to wear some pants. Baki really said when I mean it's on site, it's on site and humiliated bro taking the crown for the worst violation by a mile. Relationship Baki is a demon demon and what he becomes as the season progresses is straight up remarkable. Baki still ain't there yet though. There was some catalyst that needed to take place in order for him to level up and I could not believe what this catalyst ended up being. The catalyst just so happened to be Baki doing the deed in the most descriptive sex scene I've seen in anime that they did not hold back with at all. It was one of the wildest scenes in Baki which is definitely saying something and the fact that Baki related it to fighting absolutely sent me. I feel like I was being gaslit as well because bro was actually making sense of it but still after watching this shit I came to the conclusion that this show is simply not real and fresh out of bed Baki started moving different. Not one but two inmates come charging at him to fight but he wasn't aggressive or seeing red like the other times but was kind of nonchalant with it. After doing his thing in a bedroom Baki just ascended and became even more of a monster than he was before slapping up not one but two of these inmates with ease. Bear in mind one of these guys were built up for the past couple episodes to be the most dangerous foe at the moment but Baki handled him comfortably. He was even mimicking his moves that he spent years cultivating and doing it better than him. One cool detail the story points out is that it's not just the training you do that makes you strong but the experiences you go through and even though that's such a ridiculous thing to say after what Baki just did that statement is straight fact within the world of Baki especially when you take a look at the other masters of their craft with Doppo and Retsu. Baki was in the zone here and man I gotta say this was definitely one of the coolest moments of the season. Insane when you realize the scene is following but still a very dope showcase of Baki going crazy. Part 2 wasn't just Baki on demon timing though other characters did their thing as well with Retsu going on a little rampage as well. Man this Doyle inmate was the most slimy guy escaping every situation where they could have captured him but it was understandable this time around. This guy is an assassin so taking him down wasn't going to be as easy as the others but god damn what Retsu did to him can't go unnoticed. This dude Retsu will forever be one of my favorite characters but I had the same issue with him that I had with Baki earlier. Motherfucker just wasn't throwing hands like at all but the series was cooking up something special that I just had to wait on. Retsu comes across Doyle while casually shopping and for the first time this inmate's cheap tricks wasn't going to work out. Retsu had this dude on lock and was straight up embarrassing him with constant barrages. Bro couldn't breathe for a second and Retsu really said if you want to taste the feet here you go. When he pulled out the staff the violation got so much worse and I ain't seen this level of a kung fu beatdown since Dre did that flip kick in the karate kid. A true master at work but the only L this man took was saving this dude. I get that he did him a favor by watching over him but you just can't trust these guys and bro suffered the consequences later on when he destroyed the HQ burning everyone on the floor and on a sadder note destroying this cool ass poster. This was the worst thing anyone has done in this season by far but Doppo and multiple others finished the job. The Retsu fight, Doppo's revenge, Haneyama going crazy at the start. As the story continues you constantly get reminded about how built different this cast is and it's honestly so cool to see. The reintroduction of Biscuit Oliver as well was absolutely ridiculous. The guy is the definition of a monster and talking about monsters Hanma freaking Yujiro man. The strongest of all time goat was in and about this season as well but his biggest highlight was of course him pulling up to Baki and his girl. Scared the life out of me seeing him pop up like that but I am excited to see what he gets up to in the next arc. I don't know how my avid Baki fans out there feel about this adaptation but I thought it was fun as hell just like Baki always is. I straight up just had a good time watching this and if you guys enjoyed hearing me yap about it I might just have to run it back with another vid talking about the later arcs. The death row arc was special but I just know the right side tournament got something for me. If you made it this far thank you for watching please leave a like and subscribe for more content on Baki and anime in general. I appreciate you all and I'll see you next time. Peace.